right, so my 800 was leaking fuel. And I didn't know where. It's all I really needed to do to this thing. Oh, and I put my can back on. What up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Fixing a ride is where you're at. Thanks for coming back. We're going to give an update here. Uh, part number six on the 03 Pantera Arctic Cat Slut, of course. 550 Luxury Touring Edition. Two up. Things going good. I've made a lot of progress. I'm going to show you a couple things that I've done. But first, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, smash the alert bell, smash the like button. I mean, come on back, check out what we got going on. I'm always doing something here, so... Uh, yeah, got a lot going on, um, a lot of stuff planned, so I can't really go into all of it right now, so, but trust me, it's going to be well worth it. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram as well as TikTok, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I got the engine installed, I got the clutches cleaned up, everything is looking amazing, I actually already started this thing, so, um... The only thing that I found wrong with it was that uh, after running it for a minute, warmed up, and after running it for a minute, I checked the plugs, and the plugs looked a little lean. Um, so I pulled the carburetors off, completely went through those, reset them, and they were good to go. You can see right here that the jetting chart shows for 0 to 20 plus degree, or plus 20 degrees Fahrenheit in no uh, less than 2,000 feet altitude you should be at a 330 well that's what's in there and so i'm not exactly sure why it was running lean but my guess because i put the full gasket kit on this thing rebuilt the water pump whole nine yards it's got to be the gas i smelled the gas and it don't look that great this is a little that not the fuel in there came out of there uh yesterday and so it doesn't look very good and you know what's messed up too is th that gas isn't even that old that's what i don't get so yeah i'm gonna pull that out of there and replace it and uh yeah it should be good to go but i'll show you how well it starts yeah that's what i'm saying it's the gas for sure Oh, are you stinking kidding me, dude? Oh, that's awesome. So, something else to fix. But, yeah, I got the brake lever on there, too. So, gosh, it never ends, does it?
right, so it does run. Um, when I first started doing it, or when I first started to try and start it, it I uh, pulled the, the choke lever out, and then when I put it back in and I went to go pull it out again, it snapped off. And it shot somewhere, so now i got to find the lever and get a new little piece for the inside. So I don't know why those things get so stinking brittle. It's ridiculous. So, but other than that, it runs. Everything's working the way it should be. It's, uh, the track seems like it's engaging uh, at idle, and it's not too high of an RPM. So I'm going to have to take a look at that. It might be the center to center is probably a little too tight. The secondary clutch is fine. Um, let's see. I'm probably going to have to replace the gap, the uh, fuel in there because it seems like it's starting to get a smell to it. And it's only a few months old. It's not, I mean, it's not that bad. But so there's that and I got the brake lever on there and then I'll just have to button up the console as well as uh, make sure that the track is tracking appropriate and it's not tight on one side or the other and then it's got the appropriate sag. And then I'll be able to put the hood on, put it all back together and put the windshield on and it'll be ready to go. I have to put the handlebar cover on stuff like that. But let me show you what I did to the hood. All right, so you guys may remember I ended up repairing this before. Well, it broke again. So I went through and heated up the old ones and pulled, popped them out because it was just all rickety and rackety. And I did um, a lot more plastic welding and I put a lot more supports. And then uh, what I did is I ended up taking a piece of aluminum stock that I had, cut it to size, drilled some holes, and then just riveted it in and give it a lot more support. So that'll be good to go this time around. And then I even did some supports on the top there. Either way, the rest of it's good. I even did a section there. So that's all good right there. And this is the headlight out of it. And I found that this half of the headlight busted off. So I ended up using the plastic welder on that too and ended up cutting a new piece and yeah, good to go. So thank God for that. Um, so I think the only other thing I need to do other than put this all back together and put the hood on and the windshield and then make sure that the clutch is center to center is good is get that old crappy fuel out of there. And the rest of it's just a little stuff. And I might pop off the skis and powder coat the little ski saddles down there just to spruce it up a little. Uh, I don't really have time to pull the whole suspension apart and redo all that. But everything else seems everything else is good on this thing. So I'm going to post it up for sale. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get those other things done off camera and then I will show you the finished product. So, uh, but we'll save that for the next video. I know I'm kind of dragging this out. Sorry, just like I said, I just got a lot of stuff going on. So, but not a big deal. Uh, a couple things I did to my 800, I'll show you here. All right, so my 800 was leaking fuel and I didn't know where. So I just went around and kind of looked and long story short, I found a crack on the back here and uh, ended up using some uh, dual compound epoxy. Uh, what I did is I just I took a screwdriver from the outside and I split it apart. I just lifted it up and then I put some epoxy down in there and then uh, pressed it back and then put something heavy on the top, let that dry. And then I plugged this hole up. I used this little piece of uh, foam here and then... Uh, obviously a towel around it and then slip that down in there and then it had a hole on the back of it so I could pop it out but I put that down in there and make it uh, sealed up as good as possible no vapors because I was going to be working with that welder that plastic welder so I did that and got that in there and uh, yeah as far as I know it doesn't leak anymore so we'll definitely it'll be uh, tested the next time I take the sled out and then another major thing if I can get my hood all the way open here, was the engine was super oily on this front side. And that was because when I initially got this, the Y pipe had a crack in it right across there. Well, another one formed on this side and then I didn't realize it, but there was another one on the bottom right across here on the bottom side. And it wasn't like in the main pipe section. It was just pretty much in that real thin metal there. So I popped the whole thing off, sandblasted it, welded it back up a couple times, and then put it back in the sandblaster and then coated it with some satin ceramic VHT uh, hot flame paint or hot, whatever it's called. It's a ceramic paint. And then I cured it three times, just like the other Y pipe on the 550 there. And then I cleaned everything up as best I could. And wow, it looks way better now. I mean, all this was coated. This was all black in here. 
it looked horrendous. All that was black, all up around here. And so I took a toothbrush and some Simple Green and a rag and just went at it. Took me about an hour or so. Got her all cleaned up. She looks good though. And then I placed an order to this company online to get these um, Japanese industrial standard bolts for, for the 550. And it's actually these bolts here. I didn't get, it's not these ones, but it's these ex, these bolts, but with the standard zinc coating on them. And so, you know, now it'll all match. I'll probably end up replacing these with them. But I got a, I've got a couple, I ordered, um, actually I got the, all the shorter ones I was able to get on McMaster Car. These long ones here though, I couldn't get on McMaster Car like I could with these ones back here. So these long ones I ended up ordering from this company that's in California. So it took me a little bit, but when they first sent them out there, somebody got the part numbers wrong and they sent me these copper coated eight millimeter or M8 by 1.25 thread flanged nuts. And so I was going to send them back and I was like, hey, those are, they're orange. They're kind of cool looking. I'm going to put them on the 800, I think. And it turned out pretty cool looking. So yeah, definitely some neat little color scheming going on there. But yeah, so I cleaned all that up and I think that's all I really needed to do to this thing. Oh, and I put my can back on. So this thing sounds like a beast. Love it. It's a pretty cool can. The whole reason I put that can back on there is because I ended up getting the suitcase, this thing right here. I ended up getting that on, I think it was Marketplace, and then I ended up putting that on there because the first time we took this, this uh, 800 out, my ears were ringing. For some reason, they were just ringing laying in bed on Sunday night after we went. went I think it was, it was when we got home, my ears were still kind of ringing. So I'm not sure exactly why that was, but... It was probably just because it's it's noisy out there, you know, a lot of wind and whatever. But it still does it. It still would do it here and there most of the time with that suitcase um, muffler on there. So I said, screw it. I'm putting the can back on. I like the way it sounds. So I'm not sure if those change flow or anything to the point to where it has an effect on the jetting at all. I wouldn't think it do does, but I don't know. It almost seems like the, the idle's a little off again so i want to take a look at that but it's not like it's running lean it might be running a hair lean on you know at idle but i mean that's only up to like eighth throttle so but yeah so i'll get a bunch of different stuff done uh, i'm gonna try and start once i sell this i'm actually gonna start doing stuff to my bike because i need to get a new clutch on my 250 my crf 250 and also need to uh, i want to get a new rear tire for it. i want to get uh, a geo or not a geo I'm not sure if it's a GMX or not. It's, a, it's the Dunlop MX-14. It's a new one. I got one, but it's a 120, and I planned on selling it. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll just return it and get the 110 instead. <laughs> but that's what I want is a 110 instead of the 120. So, I'm going to do the tire, and then um, I want to get, I, I want to probably get my graphics redone again. Because those are, I tore those up last year big time. I went down a few times, and it just, they got jacked. And then, like I said, I want to get um, a new clutch set up because mine started slipping. And the Henson clutch that I got in there is just destroyed. When I got it, I didn't realize it, but there's, there's a coating on there. And there were thin spots in the coating where all the tabs of the fiber plates were. Well, I got that and uh, an inner hub for, for 100 bucks, And that's clearly why. Because the guy knew that it was... I didn't know that. But the guy knew that it was on its way out. So it just, you know, it lasted the season and that's it. Started, you know, catching and uh, was shifting real hard. The, the race I did, you can see it actually in the first, the first race when I did, when, that I recorded at Twisted MX, or yeah, Twisted MX for Wicked Twisted Weekend. You can see when I'm sitting at the line, I was trying to get it to where the clutch was in, you know, the partially engaged to the point to where, you know, when you, when you launch, there's not much, you know, there's no lag time in the time that it takes, you know, your clutch to engage and then your wheel to start spinning. So you partially engage it to where the chain's tight and then boom, you just let it go and launch, you know, twist it and launch and go. Well, you can see it was like kept cut, catching and like jerking me forward. <laughs> And so uh, I fixed it after that. I ended up filing down the tabs on there, but yeah, that evidently didn't last long. It started slipping my last ride at uh, Super Coop in the fall. 
And I've rode it around here a couple times and it seems like it's okay. So I don't know. I, but I, what I want to do is get a Barnett clutch because a Barnett clutch uh, outer basket has replaceable stainless steel tabs on it, which th they're covers and they go all over the tabs. So, you know, those start to get more a little bit, then you can replace those and, you know, it makes your outer basket last way longer. So we'll see how it goes. It gets good. It's got good reviews, uh, but, you know, it's a few hundred bucks. So I'm going to do that. And then uh, just a few other things, a tire and uh, what was the other thing I wanted to do to it? There was something else. Oh, I'm putting my old, I'm putting a CRF 08 cam in there. And then I got to check my book to see what my hours were when I put my top end in. And I'm, I don't know if I'm going to put a bottom end in that thing or not. I, mean, I feel like I'm pushing my luck, but I'm using good oil. I don't know how long people will use their bottom ends for, but you know, if I'm racing harder and I'm going to be racing harder, I might want to do it before I mess something up and I've got to get new cases or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, that's it for now. Just wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, things are moving along. They're progressing. Um, so yeah, if you guys like what you see, like I said before, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell that we're notified on your uh, devices of when I upload another video. Don't forget to smash the like button. Always appreciate that. Helps out. You guys have been doing great. Just hit 2,800 subscribers, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm not sure. I have I have some boots that I'm going to give away. They're, they're brand new Thor XPs that I got in replacement for my old ones. Uh, just some damage happened to those, and they replaced them. They were within the warranty or whatever. So uh, they're brand new. I haven't worn them. They're size, I think they're size 11, 10 and a half, 11, something like that. So I think I'm going to, but I want to start doing giveaways. And I might actually do that when I hit 3,000 subscribers. So as soon as I as soon as I hit some uh, three three thousand, maybe 3,500. Either way, that's going to be a giveaway to subscribers, you know. And I'll do the whole nine yards of how that goes this summer. So I mean, they're not old. I've only had them for a couple months now. If you're not subscribed and you want a chance to win a free pair of boots, subs hit the subscribe button and you'll be entered into win a free free pair of boots. Those Thor XPs and they're nice. They're black and white, so they're pretty sweet. You know, they pretty much go with anything. Also, want to check us out on Instagram. I got stuff going up there. Uh, I also have stuff on TikTok. And it's uh, Andrew Crocker at Fixing the Ride. Or Fixing Ride Andrew Crocker. It's down below. You'll see it right there. It just popped up. <laughs> You'll see both of them. So, all right. We'll see you guys in the next video. So, thanks for stopping by. Um, come on back. You guys take care. Uh, spring's almost here. We're going to start riding again. It's, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. So, uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. So, take care. Come on back. And God bless. As always.